Hello friends, it's your monk here. Today I'm going to talk about two different things. I'm going to talk about the focus of material wants of the layperson <clears throat> and the focus of someone who's become uh, a, a samana, upasaka or upasika, upasaka or upasika or a samana or someone who's in practice, right, in the Buddhist way. So, <clears throat> in terms of the material, the normal layperson focuses the mind towards uh, material comforts and material gain constantly, constantly, every day, every day. So, it's not just about having, paying the rent, it's about buying a house. Get, most, most people have to buy it, get a loan, not all, but get a loan, pay off a mortgage, uh, then get into debt for business and get all the tools for the trade or the profession etc etc um, then there's uh having all the creature comforts in the home or the apartment <clears throat> then there's holidays vacation then there's nice clothes then there's eating out at restaurants or fancy places uh entertaining entertainment then there's uh, relationships uh where you buy each other gifts and all these kind of things now all these things there's nothing wrong with them absolutely nothing that's how you want to live your life right the thing that we need to consider um, as as people in training uh, in the Buddhist way is if you're focusing 50 60 hours a week on all these things there's not or even 70 80 hours depending on what type of work you do or what your focus is there's very little time to focus on the Buddhist path now, what's the focus of the Buddhist path? The focus of the Buddhist path is to bring us, at a minimum, to heaven in our, in you know the next rebirth or to a better place after this life, at a minimum. And the second thing is also to improve this life, to to have more happiness and more knowledge in this life. The ultimate aim, of course, is complete freedom. Freedom from what? Ignorance. The destruction of uh, the comprehension of dukkha, the abandonment of ignorance and craving, of the origination of dukkha, and realizing cessation, right, which is freedom. Okay, and we do that through the de the development. So, someone who's on this path, the material comforts become less and less important. I mean, you just like the Buddha said. The four, the four fundamentals of life, of living, is food and water, clothing, medicine, and dwelling, right? Once those four things are in check, uh, that's basically it. But the person, but the person who's uh, hell-bent, sorry, wrong word, the person who is focused on the material, uh, on, on the material gain, uh, it's more than that. It's much more than that. So, for example, most people work have to work uh, forty weeks, forty weeks out of the year or more to get that one month break or two month break uh, or two week break, depending. Some people don't get a break. Some people work six days to have one day off. But what's happening is that there's an accumulation of money, or accumulation of debt that's continuous because the mind is continuously focused on material gain, and Sooner or later, material gain comes up short because there's there's no happiness in things, right? So the difference between someone who is aware of the practice is, is the person who's aware of the practice realizes that the happiness comes from within, inside. And, and, and the citta houses pretty much everything, right? Wisdom, happiness, truth, and more importantly, nibbana, right? Problem is, it's 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 it just doesn't know, it just doesn't know, right? It needs to it needs to see, right? The chitta once the chitta sees, then uh, the abundance comes, and a Buddhist knows this, right? Uh, particularly when we study the teachings of the Buddha, or when you start to practice, you start to realize that uh, material things are just for the now, but you know this body, we have this clinging uh, to this body and clinging to feelings. Now, feelings is where we lose a lot of money and time because we're always searching for pleasantries. 
uh, pleasant, uh, let's say, uh, pleasant material comforts. You want a pleasant couch that's comfortable, uh, yeah, a nice bedroom, a comfortable bed, nice clothes that feel good. Uh, you want to have sensual pleasures continuously. And this, this itself, right, is a continuous up and down because once that sensual pleasure, pleasure is achieved, then it's over. So then comes the search for the next sensual pleasure and so forth and so forth and so forth. Right? Now, in, in terms of being on, in, on the other side of the spectrum where we're in debt, where a person is in debt a lot or doesn't have much, that person, uh, instead of sufficing to, of retreating to contentment and just being content with little, right? that person has to struggle hard because uh, to pay the debts and everything else. So the mind is in a state of torment uh, all the time. And might, the person can't relax and sit back in, and, and settle into the chitta and relax and let go of the, of, of the clinging to things. Because when we're in debt, we owe people money, there, there's, there's a bit of pressure there. It's heavy karma, right? It's heavy bivaka. It's a real thing. So the Buddhist tries to overcome these things right? by developing wealth internally by trying to illuminate the citta by with from with wisdom with sati with practice with knowledge with seeing things as they are and uh, the, the the development and cultivation of the noble eightfold path these things are, are absolutely necessary in terms of the path of the buddhist now when one realizes starts to realize that Everything outside is impermanent. That's just phenomena that comes and goes. Each feeling, each each uh, f a bit of fun that you have is just fleeting. It just comes and goes because it's 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 under the law of impermanence, right? It's it's under the, it, it it can't evade impermanence. Like you buy a hot, you buy a nice car, right? You can only drive it a few times. You you, know, you can only have fun with it so much, right? Uh, and then. You get tired of that. You want to get the next one and the next one. That's why so many rich people have like a hundred cars, even more. People uh, can't stop because it's that feeling. It's also the adrenaline rush of that feeling, that pleasantry that we seek as human beings. But once you start start to uh, abandon the clinging to these things and start to retreat within and start to understand the wealth inside, what we have inside, you start one will start to actually dislodge from the material uh, path. One will stop uh, trying to look uh, for pleasantries, I would say, for pleasantries in material things. And that's a big difference here that I try to explain to people because a lot of people that come to me, they want to be Buddhist, they want to practice, but, but their mind is attuned because of our conditioning in, in our societies to material gain because that's what's normal, material gain. That's what's praised. Uh, when you've got your house, you've got, a nice, you've got all the nice things. When guests come over, you're able to entertain them, etc., etc., etc. When you have a relationship, etc., etc., etc. I mean, this is a general statement. It's not for everybody. Not everybody lives like that. So I'm not generalizing people. I'm just say, stating it just as a form of... Uh, like a, a, a set of terms of conditioning that a lot of people have that I've observed over time, including myself before I was a monk. It was a constant, it was a constant, uh, uh, let's say, focus on material gain, never, never being happy or it's never enough, never enough. So, that, so once one learns the practice of contentment, one can retreat from that. Contentment is a really good medicine for clinging instead of, trying to have things you can't and getting in debt for those pair of jeans or to have the latest, uh, I don't know, uh, TV or whatever computer one pays by credit card and gets in the debt rather than being honest and just say, oh, well, I've got this little thing. It doesn't work very well, but I'll make the most out of it. You know, you repair it, you do what you can. Oh, my, my couch is, is not so good. Well, get some nails and some screws and get some glue and, and, and you know, or get some, buy it. You know, you know, go go along and find some discarded discarded stuff and put it all together. I mean, I used to do that when I used to live in New York. I mean, there's a lot of ways that contentment can battle greed, 
right? And wanting and wanting and wanting. And the problem with pleasant feelings is that we search for them all the time. It, it, it's an addiction. Always, we're always trying to get to better, to better, to better. Now, there's nothing unskillful about that, but one needs to determine and define what better means in a Buddhist sense, <clears throat> not in a worldly sense, right? Because we're talking about the Buddhist part. What is betterment? Uh, is betterment to enjoy one's life, to take one's focus of the path in this life, and then in the next life, I mean, not, you know, not even achieving... Uh, realization of steam ent stream entry. I mean, that would—that's the duty of the lay person. At minimum, realize stream entry. Right. So, so you won't be born in the lower realms. You know, so, this is the this is a big, a big focus of of the lay life that I would suggest for lay people and for monks too, and for monks too. But the main thing is is to understand the difference between material focus. Now, think about this. Right. If you're focusing. 50, 60 hours on money and material gain, there's very little room, very little room to practice generosity. There's very little room. And in fact, generosity makes no sense in this paradigm because it's got, I'm working, I'm trying to earn everything for myself. Why should I, uh, why should I give away uh, part of my earnings back to society or to things that are worthwhile when I have to earn? See, that's, that's not the Buddhist way of thinking because you have to give to get in Buddhism and being generous. It's not just about getting back. Actually, being generous is about uh, opening up your opening up the chitta too, because when you give a lot, you help a lot of people and that gives you a profound sense of uh, happiness and satisfaction. A lot of people who practice generosity know about this, right? You practice it for a while. You'll see what I mean. And it's not just being generous to the Sangha, just in case anyone starts thinking, um, things they shouldn't be thinking because I never say that just being generous in general you know getting behind projects that are good helping people in your local community uh, not just family but people you know people anyone strangers whatever any any project that's worth uh, uh, helping getting behind it somehow all right practice of generosity uh, helps to develop actually a, vir a virtue of uh, compassion the virtue of goodwill and it helps you develop into a better person. And Buddhism is a betterment, but it's different from material betterment. It's about an internal betterment, and it's an, it's about a future betterment. So in other words, when we pass on for this life, from this life, there is a, a scope to go higher all the time. And if we're lucky, even out to free complete freedom, the chitta goes to Nibbana, and Dukkha is completely destroyed. Ignorance. I mean, Dukkha is completely comprehended and ignorance is completely abandoned, right? So we realize uh, Nirodo, right? N uh, Nirodo, the cessation, the cessation of all this mess, right? So we go for freedom. So the, the lineage uh, in this sense is that a Buddhist, a Buddhist will start to shake off the material gain focus and start to... Uh, start to focus on merit, merit making, virtue development, uh, cultivation of, of the eight factors, cultivation development of the eight factors. Because this is what ultimately leads to much betterment in our lives as Buddhists. May you grow in Dharma. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and share with your friends.